Hey everyone, this is Will, and today I want to talk about the five best direct boxes for live performance. I know what you're thinking. You're going, Will, really? Direct boxes? We're going to take an entire video talking about direct boxes. But this is super important. If you're not familiar with what a direct box is, it's a, a device, sometimes called a DI for short, uh, which stands for direct injection. Uh, it's going to convert a unbalanced signal to a balanced signal. Essentially what that means is uh, we're going to uh, take audio out of our computer, either via the headphone output or an audio interface, plug into a direct box to convert it to an XLR signal. Oftentimes you'll plug that into a stage snake on, on stage that then is going to run a really long cable back to our soundboard. And we do that so we convert it from unbalanced to balanced uh, so that it can run long distances and, and not degrade the quality of the sound. So you'll see these often on stage. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what I believe are the five best direct boxes because this is essential to your setup. Before we get to that though, bear with me for a moment because I want to let you know about uh, before I dive into this, you may actually not need a direct box. So if you're using an audio interface like the Play Audio 12, for my connectivity and spin this guy around. You look at the back of this, it doesn't have XLR outputs, but it does have these outputs on the back and all of these outputs are balanced outputs. In addition to that, all of these outputs are protected against fan and power surges. So if you've ever used a soundboard um, live or you've tried to plug a mic into an audio interface in your studio, you've probably seen that plus 48V. I'm looking at mine right here on my uh, audio interface and that's fan and power. That's gonna power, provide the power needed to a mic to a device to uh, to allow you to use it live. But if you're not careful in a live scenario, if you plug in an audio interface that um, uh, is not protected against phantom power surges, unlike the Play Audio 12, then your audio interface could be ruined and could be fried. So if you're using the Play Audio 12, something like that with balanced outputs and uh, with outputs that are protected against phantom power, then skip the direct box and buy something like this, the Hosa uh, STX803M. I tell you, the folks at Hosa just really know how to name products. Uh, and this takes uh, TRS outputs, so these are our outputs here that would go into the interface, converts them to XLR uh, outputs here. And then what we could do is take that stage snake and plug it into, uh, or take that snake, plug it into our stage box, our stage snake on stage. How many times can I say the word stage in one sentence? That's a lot of stages. And then it's going to run a very long distance back to our soundboard. And again, we're not going to degrade the quality of that. So if you've got an interface with balanced and protected outputs of it uh, against phantom power, then check that out and skip the direct box. But if not, then you're in the right place. And let's talk about our five best direct boxes for live performance. Up first is the Behringer Ultra DI. DI100. Now this is a mono interface, so it's a one channel interface, uh, or direct box, excuse me. So if you're gonna use this with Tracks Live, uh, you're gonna need two of these, one for click and then the other one for your other output. But what's great about this, is it does have a pad, which means it's gonna reduce the, the incoming signal of that. Um, it's got a link channel, so you could loop out to something if you needed. Like if you're using this for a bass guitar, you would loop out uh, uh, to go to your bass amp or whatever. Bass plugs in here, bass amp goes here. And then on the output side of this, let's see if we can uh, find the output side. There we go. Uh, there's our XLR signal that comes out. We also have a ground lift, which is super it's a, a real great benefit of using drag boxes. You can lift the ground and maybe if there's some noise or something in there, uh, you can get rid of that hum. So this is a really great price for a uh, interface, uh, a direct box. So even if you have to buy two of these, then what's great is uh, it's still super, super affordable. So that's a Behringer Ultra DI DI100, which is a great solution. Uh, the next uh, option on the list here is from a company that makes some of the best gear for live performance. It's very solid. It's very well built. Uh, this is the Radial Pro DI, and you've probably seen these on a lot of stages. They're very, very well built. Uh, this is the mono version of this. Again, we have that through output here as well, too. We have a pad uh, to, to uh, reduce the sig incoming signal if we need to. We have our XLR output, and then we have our ground lift, uh, which again is going to remove kind of the hum and signal there. Um, so you could see um, a, a lot of great options on this. It's uh, it's very well made. It's very, very quiet. This is what is kind of like the industry standard for direct boxes if you're going to step on stage. You'll see the price. It's way more expensive than the Behringer, but if you need something that you know is going to last, uh, this is a passive direct box, which means it doesn't require uh, power to be used, uh, then this is a great solution. Again, if you're going to use this for tracks, you're going to need another one. So you just want to keep that in mind. You'd have to buy two. Another great solution, though, if you're using this for tracks in particular, instead of buying two of those, 
What you may want to consider is this, the Radial Pro D2. This is a two channel. It's also passive, but it gives you two inputs um, that you can use live. So what's really great about this, let's see this view. Uh, we get an input and through on both of these, which is really great. Again, for us running tracks, the, the out, the through part of this doesn't really matter much. But if you were um, in maybe a small club playing and you were a keys player and you had an amp on stage to hear yourself, then you could loop out of this um, uh, to go into your amp directly, which could be a cool solution for you. Uh, but for us using tracks, we have two inputs. So we could send our uh, click to the left side here. We could send our tracks to the right side. We have pads independently for both of those, which would reduce our signal. Uh, we have our ground lift, which again is going to re reduce the hum. And then we have our outputs here. So that's a really great price. Uh, 179 um, for uh, a stereo direct box. This is passive as well too, which means it doesn't require any power, any phantom power. Uh, but that's a really great solution. And again, I can't stress enough. The radial stuff is, is built like a tank. Like, I mean, it's really hard to break these guys. Um, I mean, you've got to like chuck it against the wall, run over it, and then maybe even still, it's probably not going to break. Um, but let's go to our next level. There's two additional uh, direct boxes I want to talk about here uh, in this video. And these are particularly helpful in a track rig, a track setup where we've racked everything up. We put everything into a rack. Maybe you've got a redundant rig uh, running dual Mac minis that you've racked up, whatever it is. It may be nice to have a direct box that is is rack mountable as opposed to having lots of direct boxes just scattered across the floor. So in that case, the first option I want to mention here is the Behringer Ultra DI Pro DI800 uh, version two. It's better than the first version. It's eight channels. It's active. So it does require phantom power in order to power. And actually it comes with power here. So you just plug the power in and it works. Um, this interface at first might be a little confusing on the front, but let's start on the back. Here's our balanced output. So there's our eight XLR out outputs. Let's see if we can look at the front here. Um, we have our input, then we have our link, and then we have an unbalanced out as well on the front here. Uh, we have our pad, a minus 20 dB pad, a minus 10 dB pad, and then our ground lift. So if we're using this on a track setup, we're going to just plug into our input. We're not going to deal with the link output here. Uh, there's no reason for us to use that in a track scenario. And then if we need to lift our ground, then we would lift that here. We're not going to use this, uh, this right here unbalanced out on the front. We're going to use the XLR output on the front. Uh, and then again, it's powered here, which is going to give us all of our uh, power needs, which is which is great. So this is a great solution. Uh, you could see this is super affordable, 139 bucks. Um, I had one of these when I first started using tracks. This is what I used in my rig, uh, and it worked really, really well. It was super convenient to have um, the XLR outputs there and just show up to a, a venue and just ask for, ask for XLR cables plugged from there uh, directly into the uh, stage snake, which is super great. So that's a great solution, but I think there's a better solution. So our final solution I want to mention here, and I'll mention a couple reasons why I think this is uh, the best solution. Uh, back to Radio, which is such a great company. This is the Radio Pro D8 8-channel passive instrument direct box. Now, you can see, again, this is uh, substantially more money but it's incredibly well built. And here's the biggest thing that's really nice. I mean, this seems like a small thing, but look at where the XLR outputs are on this. So this just shows you the genius of, uh, of radial. And I think you can actually swap the rack ears on this. Um, maybe you can on the Behringer. I should check that out as well too. But I, I think you can swap the rack ears, I believe. So you can make this the other way if you wanted. But what I love about this is we have these XLR um, outputs on the front of our interface. We could put this on the back if we wanted to so that uh, it's really easy to get to and you don't have to dig around in the back of a, a rack full of gear without lights to connect it. Um, but similar to everything we've looked at before, we have our XLR output. We can adjust phase on this, which I don't think you'll be done with um, uh, running tracks. We have a ground lift, uh, just like we've had on everything else. Then if we look at the other side of this, here we go, here's our back side. Uh, we have our um, inserts, we have through, and so we can insert effects in here, like send and return effects. Uh, and then we have NA and NB, so we would go into the NA here. Uh, and then we have our pad for this, for each of these inputs, which is great. Um, and so we have all these uh, inputs that we can connect up to eight inputs directly from our interface and then our XLR outputs um, directly on the front panel of this. Again, the thing that's so great about radial is um, these are very quiet direct boxes. If you're not careful, sometimes a direct box can add some, some hiss or some hum uh, if it's made with cheaper components, but the radial stuff is really solidly built. Um, I like the fact that the XLRs are on the front of this. Again, I'm pretty positive you can swap the rack ears looking at this. Um, but this is a really great solution if you're looking for a rack mount direct box, uh, if your interface needs that. And it makes it just really easy to use uh, in live performance on stage. Now, 
I know direct boxes, like I said, are not the most interesting thing to discuss, but if you're looking for, hey, what's the best audio interface? We talked about that. What's the best in-ears that I could use uh, for live performance? What's the best um, hard drive for live performance? Whatever it is, computer, then head to from studio to stage.com slash gear. You can download my free gear guide and I have all my top picks of all these things that we've talked about in videos in one central place so that you can find gear that I like to say is road tested and mother approved. You know, it's going to work. You know, it's solid. It's going to hold up and has been used by many people on the road and tested. So if you're interested in that, head to from studiostage.com slash gear. Uh, and then to make sure you see all the content I post on this channel, I post something brand new every single day, 10 a.m. Central, then make sure you subscribe to the channel and do me a favor. This next part is super important. Click the bell icon and turn on notifications. That way you'll know as soon as I post a new video, you'll get notified. If you're interested in the topic, you can click through and watch. Uh, and if not, you can just ignore it and catch me on the next one the next day at 10 a.m. Central. Thanks so much for watching this video, everyone. We'll see you on the next one, uh, 10 a.m. Central. Take care. Bye.